Hi guys, we're gonna jump right into this and open up Carved Code Maker. And if you don't already have Carved Code Maker, go ahead and check out the description where you'll find a link to a free 90 day trial. So what I'm gonna do next here is open a new model. Right here you see it starts off with these recent models, but we're gonna just open a new one and enter our dimensions of our stock in here. And I've already done that at seven and a quarter by about 24 inches wide. Our units of measure here is going to be inches. And our resolution here, if you uh, make it too high and your computer is uh, a little bit older, it might slow down the rendering. So I like to leave it here at about a million pixels and we'll just press okay and that'll populate out. So now that we're in here, I can use the, the wheel on mouse to zoom in or out. And if I click the wheel and drag it, I can rotate this around. And I'm gonna jump right into importing um, the model. So they, there's a clip art library here that you have access to. And if you click get more, you'll get, I think it's like 300 something more a uh, different download file from their website. Uh, but I'm going to import a different file, this submarine warfare specialist uh, pin from the Navy. It's, it kind of just throws it wherever it wants to in, you know, the atmosphere here. So I'm going to click center and it's going to drop it right back down in the, in the dead center of that stock, which uh, if you saw there quickly, it was uh, rather, the stock was rather smaller than this model. In fact, if we look right here, it's 93 inches uh, by 296 and that's just too large um, it, we're not going to carve a 96 inch tall by almost 300 inch uh, wide model so uh, my order actually is for a 7 inch tall one of these uh, and it drops it right there I click center again and it drops it down into place and then um, so when I did 7 it had these linking checkboxes selected. And what that did is it obviously it changed all three of them to the same amount. And our bo the board I'm going to use is not quite uh, 0.82 inches. It's actually 0.745 as when I measured it. Um, but I'm going to show you a little trick where uh, I'm able to retain more of the detail. So basically, if I, if I was to change this to thinner, you'll see what happens to all the detail. I lose a ton of the detail here, right? If I drop it down to a quarter inch, which is why you want to, want to kind of keep this as tall as possible. So here's the default that it was at, uh, 0.82 inches. And if you notice around the border of some models, this one specifically, there's a little bit of a, uh, a, a straight edge slope almost on all of the edge going around. So I can kind of cheat this model a little bit and sink it down below the surface. Um, and that's gonna allow me to retain some of this height. And I'll show you how to do that right here. I'm gonna change this Z to minus 0 0.05 and apply that. And you'll notice it's gonna just drop down through. And it dropped down through there. And if I rotate it more, you can see that slice and that it is, part of it is down below that plane. And that plane is my, basically my wasteboard top. So when I click paste, it's gonna cut all that bottom stuff off of the model anyway. Um, so if I do that right now, I just put it at 0 0.05. I know my stock is um, 0.74. So I could set it to up to 0.5. 795 thick here and I'd be fine. But just to make sure I get it all carved off, I'm gonna actually set it to 0.79 and I'll, and I'll, that's fine. When I test it to 0.79, it actually adjusts this up here ever so slightly. So we need to make sure that that is reset back. Because anytime you change the size of your model, it kind of adjusts the position uh, somewhat at random. So basically I've set it to 0.79. My model is higher, is taller than my board is, but I've sunk it down in a little bit to account for that. So now I'm gonna click paste and that's basically dropping the relief where I have it, where I have it set in all these settings here. So what I'm gonna do next here is in order to do the carve, um, I have to create a relief for it. Just the way it carves, I'm either gonna be stuck doing this whole outline or it's gonna go along this path 
and I won't be able to come down and get this detail all the way to the edge. Uh, it'll only kind of roll over part way. And if you do what I've done so far and you go through the, skip what I'm about to do and go to the tool paths and just jump in with tool paths, you'll see why. Now that I've imported the relief, I can go ahead and make, basically I'm gonna outline it with a vector. And I'm, to do that, I'm gonna create and then relief boundary. And that's gonna create a trace, a vector trace, right around the outside of the uh, relief that you imported. Anything that's above that zero plane slice. If I go from now and create the tool path, uh, I don't believe that it lets me offset from this vector. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna create an offset so that I can offset the tool using my own uh, kind of cheat from the vector. So I'm gonna create an offset right here. And that one I'm gonna use for the roughing pass. And I'm gonna create one more offset that I'm going to use for my finishing tool pass. All right, so I've got the original vector around the uh, relief right here. I've got my initial offset for the finishing pass. And that's gonna allow my tool to go outside this boundary and carve it into the very bottom of the uh, workpiece. And then I've got this secondary offset, which is my roughing pass. That way there's no real chance at uh, my bit coming in contact with any excess stock that's sticking up. All right, so I'm gonna go in here real quick and choose tool path and then 3D is this little uh, button down here. And I'm gonna show you what happens if you don't create this offset boundary by leaving this at whole relief. Normally I would change it to selected vectors and select that vector. Uh, but to show you how what it does, if you don't do that, I'm gonna select uh, whole relief and then go through here and select my roughing tool pass. I have a six millimeter uh, upcut bit that I'm going to use for this. It automatically slices the Z bases based on the uh, step downs that was entered in for that bit. And at roughly four slices, it then auto calculates to get four even slices for these step downs. And then the ramping is set up here, but the plunge height by default is a little higher than what I like. So I'm gonna change that to, oh, that's supposed to be zero, 0 0.1 inches for my um, ramping for this. And I'm using ramping because this is a, a flat end mill and I don't want it to uh, force itself down that a little bit more than eighth of an inch without any sort of ramping. The next step is to set up our safe Z and, and then next step, you'll see why it shows this number, but I'm, I'm gonna enter one inch for my safe Z and the home is where it's gonna return to after this cut, which is the X and Y zero and the Z one inch above the Z zero. And in this step here, I'm going to uh, create the stock. And the stock for this, as I measured before, was 0.745, right? So I'll enter that right here for the material thickness. It knows my model is 0.739. And right here is where I would set my Z zero if I was using the top of the stock. But I'm actually gonna use the wasteboard top. That way I don't have to deal with any of this getting carved or in the way or dealing with setting the actual Z zero off of this point. I'm going to use the wasteboard out here in the front. And by doing that, and by changing this number up here, I now have extra material. And it's trying to put it down below my carve, but what I want is the extra material to be above my carve, so that my carve goes all the way through, and then it's going to just kiss the wasteboard right there. With that material set, I'm ready to click Calculate. And you'll see momentarily why I don't wanna leave it at whole relief, and why I did this offset vector right here. So at whole relief, uh, here is my tool path in red and blue, uh, with the carving in red. And what I end up with is if I go over here to tool path summary, a two hour and one 11 minute carve. Um, and that's more than I want. So I'm gonna select selected vectors. I'm gonna click on that outside vector right there and recalculate. And that's recalculation, we're down to only carving that plus a little bit extra. So after that has processed, uh, now you can see that the carve is only up to that offset that I put there. We're down to, from two hours and 11 minutes, down to one hour even. 
So that's nice, right? There's some areas where you notice it doesn't rough in above here. That's probably, those are my highest points. So when we do our 3D toolpath, it will go over and cut that off. And if you want to see what this toolpath is going to look like, I'm going to go over here and simulate that toolpath. And that's uh, more or less what it's going to look like. A neat thing with these simulations too, is if you come over here to material, you can change it to a different type of material to get a better visualization of what it's going to look like. So what we have to do next is, now that simulation's over, I'm gonna delete that one. Because anytime you run a simulation, it kinda, it, it'll keep it until you delete it and then run another one. So the next step here for the tool path is to create the finishing path. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm not gonna run you through that process of um, how it looks bad if you do certain things. And so I'm gonna select that, that secondary offset that's right there in the middle, right? Um, for this pass. And I'm gonna select finishing tools and I created my own taper bit. It's not in the normal library. And that's a quarter of a millimeter uh, radius tapered ball bit with an eighth inch shaft. And these are the specs for it. Actually, I think that my, yes, my feed rate is, I'm gonna set the feed rate to 10,000 and the plunge rate to 3,000 millimeters a minute. And what that's gonna do is, uh, it's kind of my mid range. I can adjust that up or down. I use the open builds software to send this and I can double it up to 20,000 or I could drop it down to 10% at 1,000. So that's kind of why I chose that mid range there for that. We've already done the roughing using a different tool path, so we can leave that off of this one. And um, since we are already did most of the roughing, or we roughed out most of the material, I can delete ramping and that's gonna make it go a little bit faster. And everything else, uh, we leave the same. We're not doing multiple Z passes uh, because we've already cut off most material with the roughing. So I'll go ahead and click calculate and this is what we get from this tool path. And you'll notice because I did that offset there, it's going down all the way. And if you don't do that offset, you'll see that these lines end halfway down this edge and then you'll never get your material cut all the way out unless you come back and like sand it or something like that or come back with a scroll saw around the outside to get to free the, uh, the carve. So now that we're done with that one, I'm gonna turn that off. Uh, we can run the tool paths like I did simulate them and it'll just simulate them back to back here and we have what the finished carve is going to look like and you can simulate them one at a time if you like you notice how i click simulate and it didn't do anything because the previous simulation is still stuck there so i can simulate this one and it takes it to that point and then i can simulate the toolpath after that one and it will remove a bit more. And there you can see how it's gonna carve out. The roughing bit can't get in there to get that piece, but that's okay. And if the, here, you see these lines, and what those lines are, are the scallops of a ball bit. So when the ball bit does a step over, it creates these little scallop lines, uh, and if you, want to see less of them, you can do more step overs and that's gonna make your carve take longer. And like the other one, the toolpath summary of one hour, we're at one hour and 39 minutes for this one. So depending on the amount of detail that you want, uh, you could add, you could uh, increase the fineness of the step over right here and that will give you less scallops and more you know, more fine detail, but it's gonna increase the carve. But I'm gonna actually change this on the fly to 0 0.7, 0 0.007 inches, and recalculate and kind of get rid of those, a little bit of those scalps you see there. Another thing that happens with this software, since we chose 10 million pixels, it's showing 10 million pixels for the whole entirety of this board. Um, so it may very well be wasting pixels and decreasing what we can see visually here. So I can go through here and adjust the resolution and bump that up on my computer without any uh, issue for the operating speed. So now our toolpaths are already in here, we're ready to go.
we can uh, save these. You can either save them one at a time by selecting this and the save button here, or you can just select toolpaths and it will save them both at once. So here it threw them both into the toolpaths to save. And I have chosen the gerbil in millimeters because that's what my machine is set to is millimeters. G code. And if I click save, uh, it's trying to save two different toolpaths with two different bits. And Carveco is smart enough to tell you, you can't do that with that post processor. The generic Gerbil post processor is not set up for an automatic tool change. So you can't do tool, two tools at once. So in that case, I select this checkbox over here, save toolpaths to separate files for each tool, and append the toolpath details to the file names. So I have uh, Submarine Warfare Specialist pin. So now that I've saved that, I can exit out to my desktop where you can see I have uh, toolpath one, six millimeter roughing, and toolpath two, quarter of a millimeter tapered ball. So I'll select roughing, and here we are. Open builds populates the 3D view, and you can rotate it around the axis and see that my plane here is below the model, which reminds me yet again that I need to zero my Z to the wasteboard. So now that we're done over here saving or exporting the G code, we can go ahead and just save this file and we'll set it at, I think it was seven by 22 or something to that effect, right? Uh, so I saved it with the size on there and the file name, and now I can safely close this. One of the things that I skipped is the toolpath summary. What we have in here is in this file, you can print this out if you like and have it at, you know, next to where you're carving. And then once you run the uh, initial roughing carve, you'll have the time that it actually took to machine, right? And using that, if your rapids were entered correctly up here for what your machine is set to, uh, you'll be able to adjust the scale factor and it will auto adjust these machine times. And the scale factor is essentially your acceleration. If your carve time here for this one set to one hour, to actually took an hour and a half, you might set the scale time up to what, six? And then I get an hour and a half. Uh, and that did also adjust the finishing pass accordingly because if the time was off 50% for the roughing, it's going to be off 50% for the finishing. So that's how you use this scale factor and correct for your machining time being off. So with that done, we'll just save this file and exit out of here. And now back over in open builds, we can manipulate this 3D view over here, uh, but we're ready to set our X and Y to the center of the stock by doing that line method and crossing right in the middle, and then setting our Z off to the front or back, a certain location where I've marked, where I'm gonna set the Z using the probe twice, once for the uh, roughing pass, and then again for the finishing pass. And that is essentially how you would use CarveCo in this application. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and carve this and get back with you guys when that's done.